Hey guys, this is the Larry Bear here for the final round of our 8th floor. We are on the draw. We have a 2 lander, Timberland Guide, Borderland Ranger, Bone Splinters, Driver of the Dead, Soul Cage Fiend. This hand is perfectly keepable. Um, if we draw one land, we can get the Borderland Ranger out. Um, so we're not going to mulligan here. And we have the 2-2 two, two, to sort of stall up the board in the meantime. Uh, we don't draw the land quite yet, so we do have two more turns to draw it. Um, decently high chances, I would say. He plays Nightshade Peddler. And we'll play out the Timberland Guide. And we draw the Mountain, which is good for us because that's our splash. I don't want to show it to him quite yet, though. If we draw another land next turn, we'll play that instead. But we'll play out the Timberland Guide, give itself the plus one plus one counter. And pass the turn. So our opponent's green white, he plays a Thrombin Valiant. Um, most likely will soul bond, I would imagine. Yep. And he'll swing in for one death touch. Which is okay with us. We will um Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. So he wants to block the, um... I guess he wants to block the Timberland Guide. I'm trying to think if we do want to actually, um, like, trade here. We could always Deathwind his Thrawn Valiant to take out the Nightshade Peddler 2 and 2 for 1 him. But he does have 1 green mana up, so he could have, um, Joint Assault, and that would just be... A beating and a half for us, because we would lose. We would get two for one, um, which seems absolutely terrible. So I don't want to risk it. And then next turn we will play the. We will swing in, or if he swings in against us with his Dutch touch, death touch guy, we will block because we have a driver of the dead in the hand. Um, so we can get back the Timberland Guide. Um, having the two drop in our yard is more valuable than having it out into the field at this point. So if he swings, we will block. Indeed he does. Um, I think we are probably... We'll block the Thrombin Valiant. If he decides to pump, that's okay. He does play the Joint Assault, so he had it last turn. So that was definitely the right play there. Um, so we lose our Tumberling Guide, which is, you know, what we wanted, actually. Um, here, we have Trusted Force Mage. Uh, I think we would want to Trusted Force Mage the either the Driver or the Soul Cage Fiend, uh, whichever. But um, here, I think we can... S uh, we don't want to actually... I'm trying to think if we want to swing in with um, Borderland Ranger. He didn't play anything at 4 mana, and he has 3 cards in hand. We have 2 removal spells. So I think trading here would be okay with us. So we're going to swing in. He chooses not to block. So he'll take the 2, and we'll play the Driver of the Dead. <clears throat> and then we'll see if he decides to swing in or not. Um, considering, I don't think this is a good trade for him, because we will block the Thrawn Valley and give back our Timberland Guide, and give the plus one plus one to the Borderland Ranger most likely, uh, to make it a 3-3, three, three, and then we can play the Trusted Force Mage next turn to make it a 4-4 four, four and swing in. But, um, you know, we'll see what he does. We really want to hold back the Blaze Gold Knight Commander. Okay. So that's alright with us. He chooses not to swing. Or he chooses, yeah, he chooses not to swing. Uh, we draw another Swamp, which is good because we don't want to show him the Mountain Splash at this point. He's tapped out. 
Um, and I think swinging in with Driver of the Dead is okay here, because then we can Death Wind. He only has three other cards in hand. Um, I'm trying to think if like we'd actually want to like Death Wind to just two for one him on his guys, because the Gold Knight Commander doesn't do much very much if you don't have a lot of creatures in hand. Um, so I think swinging with the Driver of the Dead and the Borderland Ranger is okay. Um, if we swing in with both, um, if we swing in with both, he'll block, block, and then we'll get back our Timberland Guide. We traded a Borderland Ranger and a Driver of the Dead for Nightshade Peddler and Thrombin Valiant, and we got back our Timberland Guide. We'll make it a 2-2 two -two and then make it a 3-3 three -three with Trusted Force Mage. Um, so we'll have two 3-3s three to his 2-2, two -two, and then we have Soul Cage Fiend and two removal spells in hand, and I feel... I feel comfortable in that position, um, considering he only has three cards in hand and he hasn't played out a ton of guys. So swinging here is okay with me. We have the um, removal backup if really necessary. So he chooses to block the Borderland Ranger with the Nightshade Peddler. I mean, he chooses to block the Borderland Ranger with the Throm and Valiant, and we'll see if he decides. Yes, he does decide to block with the Nightshade Peddler. So I'm okay with this. I don't want to use... Basically, I don't want to use Death Fiend on a guy that we could just trade for creatures anyway, and we're getting back value because of Driver of the Dead. Um, so we'll make us a 3-3. Three, three. And then we'll play the Trusted Force Mage. Actually, we may want to... Do we want a 4-3 or do we want a three, another 3-3? Three, three? I think we want a 4-3. So we're going to play the, the Soul Cage Fiend. I think we want the 4-3 and a 3-3 three, three versus, you know, a 3-2, three, a 3-3, three, three, and a 3-3. Because three, three. then if he plays a guy with 4 toughness, then we're just kind of screwed. Uh, he plays U Spirit. Um... Maybe he'll swing in here with the Gold Knight Commander, I'm not sure. And I think since we can kill it with Deathwind, we will Deathwind it versus the Bone Splinters. You know, which won't be as... Um... Hmm. So right now, we play out the Swamp. If we Deathwind his guy, we won't be able to swing in. Actually, we could probably swing in with Timberling guy because that's a fair trade. Um, and Soul Cage Fiend, actually. I'm okay trading both. Actually, I wanna, I, I do want to Bone Splinter the Soul Cage Fiend into like one of his guys later on. So I think I want to just Deathwind the U-Spirit. And then Bone Splinters, I don't want to Bone Splinter one of our... Um, I don't want to Bone Splinter as one of our 3 threes without getting some kind of effect out of it, and Soul Cage Fiend does have the effect. So I think we're going to... He only has two guys. Hmm. I'm unsure right now. Because if I think... I think if we swing in, he will block. And then next turn we can always just Trusted Force Major Soul Cage Fiend and then make it so that he doesn't have any uh, good blocks to really do anything with. So I think this is the better play. And then next turn we can always we can actually always bone splinters with our Timberland guide since it'll be the weakest creature for us. I think that'll probably be the play. And he plays Druid's Familiar and he'll swing in for five. And we will be killing the druids familiar with the bone splinters at this rate. Yeah, fully expect this win. And then this turn, we draw ghoul flesh, which isn't terribly relevant right now, but maybe in the future. Um, right now we're going to play the trusted force mage. No reason to play out the mountain right now. Uh, and show him that we're splashing anything. Yes, we want to do that. 
and we will bone splinters the druid's familiar, sacking our Timberland guide. And we're still in for four. And he plays a Pathbreaker Worm, which isn't great for us right now. I think we're probably going to Ghoul Flush that, so that way we can trade with the, the Trusted Force Mage. But we'll see what we draw, because if we draw something relevant, we may just want to do that instead. He's going to swing in for 3 here. I don't think we want to block. Um... Because I think we'll... it's a 7-5. Um, I think we can swing in next turn. Um, he's going to swing for 3. I think we'll swing with both. And then... But then he could uh, potentially kill us the turn afterwards. Uh, so we'll probably just swing in with the Soul Cage Fiend, I would imagine. Maybe we do have to block here. Hmm. I'm really trying to think about this play. If we block here, he only has one card in hand, we only have one card in hand, and we would be even on board. We have the extra draw step. Um, we have two cards in hand, technically. Um, we do have the extra draw step. Uh, he wouldn't trade the Pathbreaker Worm for the Soul Cage Fiend, though. Because if we swing in next turn, he'll just swing in, we'll go to 6. He'll go to 8. I'm trying to decide whether this is a good trade or not. I think we do have to, uh, but that'll be a 3-2 then. So it won't actually be good. I think we do have to block here. And then next turn, um, he doesn't have a play, and maybe we'll draw something. We draw Deathwind, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect for us. Um... So I think we just kill his Pathbreaker Worm and swing in with our Soul Cage Fiend. That seems like the play. Yep. And we're gonna swing in. And hopefully his last guy isn't like Vorse Claw, because that would really suck. Um, you know, and we'd need to draw the one of Bone Splinters in our deck to really pull it out from there. Uh, he's off double white, so maybe his other card in hand is a double white spell. You never know. Uh, we're going to play the forest here. Just in case we magically reclaim one of our um, death lens. And if he doesn't draw anything this turn, it looks like we win. Because uh, Soul Cage Fiend will die and, you know, bring us both. You know, deal three to both of us. Uh, it does not have anything. So, I mean, maybe this is Righteous Blow, because he has three cards in hand, and we keep drawing lands, which is not good for us. But I think the only thing to do here is swing. Yep, and he could have Banishing Stroke, too. So, you never know. If he does have Banishing Stroke, then we will be in trouble, because we've just been drawing lands. And we win, so he conceded. Um, he's white-green, you know, just like... A mid-range kind of white-green deck. The Gold Knight Commander doesn't look very, very good in his deck because um, it doesn't really take advantage of like a lot of guys beforehand. I'd imagine he probably has like a bunch of Wandering Wolves and stuff. Um, in terms of what we would want to sideboard in, I don't think Triumph of Cruelty definitely not. Essence Harvest, no, I don't think this is really going to turn into a race. I think it's just going to become an attrition war, where we'll just have more removal than him, and we just need to keep killing his better guys. Like, we need to... In this kind of matchup, what I'm thinking is that his guys are better than ours. Like, outside of a select few, like Wolfier, Silverheart, and stuff like that. Because we're playing black, and black's creatures just suck. So what we need to do is really attrition him out like you saw in that game like he played a guy we killed it he played a guy we killed it he played a guy we killed it until we had one guy on board and he had nothing left and we just won so that's basically the game plan here we want cards that can do that so the only card in our sideboard that could really possibly do that is mental agony because we might he might have a decent amount of cards in hand where it'll hit threats for us so now we need to think about what cards are bad against him um 
you know, Driver of the Dead works, that, which is something that we boarded out last time. Corpse Traders also is pretty good against him. I would imagine we can just take out the biggest thing. Um, for him, Human Frailty, he has humans, so that's definitely good. Ghoul Flash is fine, um, because I think he'll probably have some amount of X1s. We didn't see one there. He did show us Nightshade Peddler, and he did show us Thrawn Valiant, which are both targets. Um, honestly, the one card that I would think about taking out against him is the Demonic Taskmaster, because he will just play better creatures than Demonic Taskmaster than the 4-3, and probably just be able to outrace us. So I actually think that Demonic Taskmaster is bad here, and Mental Agony is going to go in. We still have 15 creatures, which is fine for us, but Demonic Taskmaster is really going to limit the amount of creatures that we can play, um, so I don't think it's good here. And you know, we're black-green, so Demonic Taskmaster doesn't really work with what we're trying to do in the first place. Um, the best case scenario for Demonic Taskmaster would be if we draw the Homicidal Seclusion as well, but that's a one-of, so I'm not really expecting for that to happen. And this hand is absolutely, you know, fine to keep. Uh, we're on a two-lander, but we have Watch it, uh, Wandering Wolf, which we can play. Um, and then if we draw uh, Black Mana, we have two removal spells, and we also have Wolfier Avenger. And then eventually if we get to enough lands, we'll fear Silverheart, so we will not fall in this hand. Because if we just draw the right lands for this hand, I think this hand just like completely takes over the game. Um, and we don't draw the lands, but we still have two more turns to draw them. Um, we'll play out the Wandering Wolf next. Let's see what he plays. He plays Nightshade Peddler. Which will not be blocking our Wandering Wolf hopefully, and we draw Homicidal Seclusion, so we really want to draw those lands at this point. We need to draw, you know, a couple back-to-back -back lands. But as soon as we draw that Swamp, we should be in a very good position, I would say. He also still doesn't know that we're splashing red for his Zealous Conscripts, which was good information to withhold. Although he could have just watched our games before this to see that. And he doesn't choose to play anything, so this could be Wolfier Avenger, which is something that I would be scared of right now. Um, we won't have to discard yet, we didn't draw the land. Um, I think we're going to swing in. If he has Wolfier Avenger, we're in trouble anyway, I don't think we're going to block. Uh, we really just need to draw lands, is the way we win this game. If he has Wolfier, he had Righteous Blow. Uh, I'm okay trading that there. We just really need to draw lands, as long as we draw that one Swamp. We should be good enough to hold him off until the late game. He only has four cards in hand right four cards in hand right now. He's gonna draw up to five. Um, play land, play a guy, so he's not gonna have a ton of resources and hopefully we can just, you know, attrition him attrition him out like I said before. And he plays mid vast protector, which is not like the scariest threat in the world. So you know, hopefully we just draw the lands. Nothing much else to say about this hand, otherwise. He does have the Death Touch um, right now. So... I think... With the way this is... Yep. He's going to swing in, bring us down to 18. And we would really just love to draw some lands. Like back to back to back. It would be awesome. And we can always try to bring ourselves back up with homicidal seclusion if necessary. And we don't want to discard because I'm not sure what we would discard in the first place. Ah, we draw bone splinters. Um. Okay, this is interesting. I think uh, we're just gonna have to pass, and I think we're gonna discard the zealous conscripts. Um, because we don't have that mountain. The chances we're gonna draw the mountain this game, irrelevant. And I also don't think that we're in a aggro kind of position where we're going to be able to play it. So, we will let this game go on. He's going to swing in and bring us down to 15, so we're still, he's not putting a ton of pressure onto us, but, you know, if we don't start drawing land soon, we're definitely in trouble. Yep. And he chooses, he doesn't have anything on the, oh, we have cool flesh. Um, he doesn't have anything, we don't draw another land, so we're going to pass again. We're going to discard Bone Splinters because we don't have a lot of creatures in hand right now to really do anything with them. Yep. 
And he's going to drop us a 12. If we draw the Swamp next turn, we're going to Ghoul Flash his Nightshade Peddler. And he has Geist Trappers. Okay. So we're definitely not in a good position. We do draw the Swamp. Um, we're not going to be blocking in either case, so I think we want to save ourselves the most damage right now. And, you know, we'll drop down to 7, and then next turn we'll have to play the Wolf Year Avenger. Um, we're still not out of this. We need to draw back to back to back lands or something like that. But uh, I think Ghoul Flashing here so that way we can block the mid bash Protector next turn is going to be our best play. Because we're not going to save any damage right now by blocking anything. And we're so far behind that we can't wait to s regenerate the Wolf Fear Avenger or anything like that. Um, we really want to draw like a land. We need to draw back-to-back -back lands now. And preferably, yeah, we just need to draw back to back lands. And hopefully he does not have threats, which he doesn't. And we draw a land, which is good. Um, we're going to play out the... Uh, if we... If we... Um, so we have a couple options here. He could drop us down to five. In which case, um, he can drop us down to two. And then we can Wolf Your Avenger, and then hope that we draw another land for Homicidal Seclusion. And then Chump Block, and then hopefully get another land to like maybe play the Wolf Your Silverheart and then block again. That's one option. We can also play out Wolf Your Avenger. Um, if we play out Wolf Your Avenger, and then he... And we block the Midgrass Protector... If he doesn't have a trick for us, which seems unlikely because he's holding four cards in hand, he is, you know, we're in trouble. We're in some deep trouble. Um, basically, what I'm thinking right now is he has a trick. So if we play Wolf Fear Avenger and block, he'll kill our Wolf Fear Avenger, bring us down to four. And then next turn, we could, like, Deathwind or something like that, and maybe go down to one but we would still be in trouble. So right now, what I'm thinking is, if we Wolf Fear Avenger, I think if he has the Pump Spell, we can kill it in response, because he, he'll most likely try to <coughs> Joint Assault, and then uh, try to kill us. So I actually think we're going to pass the turn, and play Wolf Fear Avenger at the end of his turn, and then try to... Homicidal Seclusion, and that'll bring us back up to 8. And then I think we'll probably be in a pretty good possession from there. So he's going to swing in. Like, most likely, considering the cards in his... The fact that he has 5 cards in hand right now, and he hasn't played any more threats, makes it seem... Oh, no, he didn't have anything for us. I mean, I, if he didn't play a threat last turn, I don't know why he would this turn. So he plays a Thrombin Valiant, and he's going to Soul Bond it. So we're going to Wolf Your Avenger. So if he had the Joint Assault there, basically if he had the Joint Assault there, we would have been dead. That's what I was playing around. We drew Human Frailty, which is actually, you know, decent, but not what we're looking for right now. And I think we're probably just dead from here. Um because we can't block everything. So, yeah, I think that's game. In either case, we didn't draw the lands fast enough. So, and I don't want to show him anything else. So, we're going to concede from there. Uh, I guess the right play would be to have been have blocked the mid vast protector, but I was playing around a trick because he had 5 cards in hand. I could have you would think that he had a trick there. Um, at least I thought he did. Tell me if, what you guys would have done there because I feel like that's a controversial play because uh that could have changed around. That could have changed based on uh, what he had in hand, had in hand, but you know, I had no idea. Um, this turn, I mean, this. Uh, I don't think we really want to change anything, so I think we're just gonna submit the way things are and um, see what he does. You know, I think if we had drawn the land there, 
If we dodged strong enough lands there, we would have won that game pretty easily. Our hand was really strong with Wolfie Avenger, Wandering Wall, three removal spells, and Wolfie Silverheart. You know, but that's magic for you. So our opponent seems to be taking a little bit. Maybe he's sideboarding. I don't think we really want to sideboard anything. So we're going to choose to play first. And we draw six lands in Tiberlin Guide, which is not keepable. So we will Morgan. And this is not much better, but it's got four lands and two cards. Albeit the two cards are not good, uh, with Bloodflow Connoisseur and Bone Splinters. Um, but I think we have to keep this and hope that our deck just gives us cards. Uh, he keeps. We're not going to mull. Uh, we'll play out the forest and pass. He has anything for us. <clears throat> and we will we draw Timberland Guide. Um, and I think I'm not sure if we want to reverse the order on these, because having the we could potentially have the three three blood flow condensor, which is a lot better than just having a two two and a one one. And then like switching off. So I think we actually want to hold here. What I'm thinking is, like this hand, uh, we just really need to draw out. And having the three three is just going to be better than having the um, the two two and the one one. The three uh, for the blood flow connoisseur and the Timberland guide. So we're not going to play the Timberland guide here. He's not putting a ton of pressure on us anyway. So I think we're okay. And then we can always throw the Timberland guide at uh, whatever with uh, lone splinters. So yeah, he plays a haunted guardian. Uh, which is just not <clears throat> which is fine with us. It doesn't really matter. And we are really just gonna be on the defensive right now because there's nothing much else we can do. Um, if he has a removal spell for us, we're screwed. So we can't do much. Um, plays the land, <clears throat> and it looks like he's just going to pass a turn. And we keep drawing lands, which isn't good for us. We're going to play the Timberland Guide, <clears throat> and pass a turn. There's no point in Bone Splintering as a non-threat to us, in considering our hand. And he is not doing anything right now, so. Plays Wolfier Avenger. Okay. So he has a Wolfier Avenger of his own. Uh, we will most likely be bone splintering that if, that if he ever um, taps out enough for us to. <clears throat> And, like, a card that would be good for us right now is probably, like, Homicidal Seclusion. Um, not sure what else right now. We're just going to be taking this 3 damage. If he decides to swing, and I would imagine he would. He does. He will swing in. Yep, we'll take the 3 damage. Let's see what he plays. He doesn't play anything, which is weird. Um, we draw Borderland Ranger, which is okay. Uh, we're going to play the Borderland Ranger and get the Mountain, just in case we draw the Zealous Conscripts. Yep. Grab the Mountain. Uh, and then we're going to not swing in. Because that seems bad. 
I think we really just have to wait until he like really tries to tap out with something and then um, swing in. I'm not sure. We're just in a bad position right now in either, either case. Uh, and I don't see the point in really haunt, like, killing his haunted guardian because like he's not playing anything. So, no, we do have double deathwind in the deck, so that'll take care of Wolf Revenger as well. I mean, we just need to not draw lands at this point. Is the plan? Because if we keep drawing lands, we're not gonna win the game. I mean, kind of the opposite of what happened last game. Never seem to draw your lands in the right order. Uh, we're gonna take the three. Uh, we are going to take the damage and see what he plays next. Maybe tapping out for two guys that are not bone splinters worthy would be optimal. He plays Gold Knight Commander, which is not bone splinters worthy at all. So we are going to Bone Splinters immediately, uh, considering, and we draw another land, which is apropos, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> and he knows we have the Mountain in hand, so there's no point in not playing it out. So we're going to play it out as soon as he realizes that he tapped out, and he can't regenerate his Wolf Avenger. Um, if he plays a guy and swings, I think we'll double block. Uh, nope, he just has a cloud shift. So, you know, definitely not in a good position right now. I'm not sure what we can do at this point, really. Like, honestly, we need to draw, like, Zealous Conscript, steal one of his guys, um, sack it to the Bloodflow Connoisseur eventually. You know, uh, just do some... Like, we need to draw, like, Zealous Conscript, Wolf, your Silver, Hard, back-to-back. Something. So it's not looking good for us here, and he's taking a long time, which is this insult to injury. Um, if he plays a guy and swings in with the Gold Knight Commander, I think we'll double block um, just to save ourselves some damage, and you know, try to try to kill this guy. Really unfortunate that we didn't draw those lands last game because that hand was absolutely nuts, in my personal opinion. And so far we've drawn, you know, what four lands and two spells. So out of our you know hand that was not great in the first place. Doesn't have a spell here. I'm not sure what we can do at this point. Um, I'd imagine he would just swing here. Can't imagine why not. Yep, he's attacking. So if he has Joint Assault, he would trade the Joint Assault and the Gold Knight Commander for our two creatures, which is a trade that we'll have to take at this point. So we will do it. Um, actually, if we trade, I, I, we'll just do it like this, because um, if he has a trick, we'll just sack out the Borderland Ranger to the Bloodflow Connoisseur. Surprised he didn't play a creature there. That means he has to have a trick right now. Uh, yep. And we will sack it in response. So we saved ourselves two damage, basically. And hopefully he doesn't have any more threats. That would be awesome, but of course he does. U-Spirit, which is terrible for us. I don't know why he didn't play out the U-Spirit first. That seems absolutely terrible. I mean, I guess he wanted, I guess he could have regenerated his Wolf Your Vendor, but... And he's so far ahead at this point, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we draw Wandering Wolf, so it looks like this game is over. Uh, I can't imagine a card that's really going to save us at this point. We'll play out the, the Wandering Wolf anyway. Um, we can still, if we draw the Zealous Conscripts, we still may be able to get out of this. It seems unlikely, but, you know, it's not impossible. 
We just need to draw very, very well. You know, our our draws have been absolutely terrible this game. And here comes the attack. I think we'll block the Wolf here Avenger just to save ourselves some damage. <coughs> We'll sack out the Wandering Wolf till the Blood Flow comes for it. And he has one card in hand. If he has like a Pump Spell or something, then he has a Pump Spell, and I'm not sure what we can do. Because we are way behind in the first place. Uh, he's going to regenerate. We're going to sack the Wandering Wolf. Because that Yu Spirit is just going to get really large really fast. But it's not impossible that we could still pull this one out. And he has another creature, it looks like. Or not. I guess not. Uh, he's probably leaving out mana to pump into his um, U Spirit. So here I think we're just going to do the exact same thing. Play the Wildwood Geist. Uh, we're just going to keep chum blocking and hopefully we can draw as well as Conscripts. Because we're not completely out of this game yet. We really just need to draw creatures. I mean, the Zealous Conscripts or the you know Wolfier, not Wolfier Avenger would be good here as well because we could start chump blocking, saving ourselves a lot of damage. But um, I don't know. Well, we're still at eleven. It's not impossible. Crazier things have happened. If we draw that one Zealous Conscripts, we'll be in a very good spot. Um. Because U Spirit is doing damage right now, because we can't let it through. Because we can pump it twice at this point. Yep, pump it twice. We will un undoubtedly be blocking that this turn. He's going to have to pump it. Pump the U Spirit, that is what's going to happen. And he's also going to have to regenerate the Wolf Avenger. Yep. Unless you don't want to sack out. I mean, you don't want me to sack out. Okay. Wow, he traded. That doesn't make any sense to me. He just traded the U Spirit from, from my Wildwood guys. He just, like, let us walk right back into this game. Because now we have a 4-4 four, four Blood Flow Connoisseur that's continually going to block his Wolfier Avenger unless he plays a creature like continually. That was just really, really dumb on his part. I, that was, um... No, he played Pathbreaker Worm. But I don't... Uh, that just seems silly. If we draw a removal spell here, if we draw one of our two Deathwinds or Zealous Conscripts or, like, anything else, like, we're we're solid here. That was a big misplay on his part. You just pump the youth spirit and make it so that way I have to continually sack guys. Um, that was a bad play. You would definitely want to do that differently if you're playing on his side, or if he ends up watching one of these videos. So we just can't draw... We just can't draw a land right now. And we draw a land anyway. So, you know, that's magic. But, what are you going to do? Um... I think next turn, he's going to swing in with the Pathbreaker. We are just going to uh, let it go, because we need the Blood Flow kind of sort at this point. Um, we can't do much else. Like He can't draw a creature right now. Uh, we've drawn too many lands. And, you know, his creatures have just been better than ours. Which is what I was saying, we really need the card advantage here. Here comes the Pathbreaker. 
And he's gonna swing it in the dwarf here anyway. No reason not to, I guess. I suppose. Uh, we will chump block the wolf here to save ourselves some damage. And he regenerates. Understandably. And doesn't have anything else for us. We drop down to five. We're still in this game. We do still just need to draw that, you know, wolf here. Wolf here, silver heart works. Um, Wolf here, Avenger also works. Um, Zealous Conscripts works. Um, Deathwind works. We definitely have outs. So, outs. That's Homicidal Seclusion. Um, that might be an out. We'll go up to 12, and he'll swing back for 11. Unless he has a creature. I mean, oh, we can always just chump lock. Almost out seclusion. Okay, so interesting, 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 interesting. Yep, you're only out. Except that's not my only out. So you know that's just false. Um, I think I would have played it if I didn't draw it. I'm not gonna respond because I just wanna think about this turn. Um, so if I if he swings in with his Pathbreaker Worm, we'll block and go up to 12. Um, and that'll give us a lot of turns to draw a creature to stall the board with, because Homicidal Seclusion does get us into a very nice position. Uh, if we swing in, and he just lets it through, uh, we go back up to 12, and he'll swing back for 11. And if he draws a creature, we're dead. Uh, if he draws a creature next turn, then, I mean, we'll go down to... Not very high either, but I think I'm, I feel safer not, not swinging in here and just staying back to block. We're gonna lose those blood flow connoisseur though. If he draws a creature, I'm dead. Just flat dead next turn. So I think the right play is to stay back and block. Um, I think that's really the only thing that we can do. He'll get in for, and then we'll have a three turn clock if he doesn't draw a creature. And we just need to draw a creature next turn to really be back in this. So he draws Thorn and Valiant. Uh, he is going to, I can't imagine him swinging with everything here. I don't think he can. Um, cause then I'll just block one of his random dudes, and we will gain life happily, very happily. This is really tough on us right now. We really want to keep the blood flow on us, or, like, there's so many other cards in our deck. I mean, we just need to get lucky. Um... He's just gonna swing in with Pathbreaker Worm, and if he doesn't, that's just- He doesn't swing in with anyone. Okay, that was just really- that- that was just silly of him. Um... And we draw Evernight Shade? <sighs> okay, this is interesting. Uh, we're gonna play out the Evernight Shade. Um... And then if we swing- if we, um... We're gonna play out the Evernight Shade because we can- just continually sack it to the Bloodfall Connoisseur um, to make our guys just big enough to survive. So if we swing in this turn, let's see, if he draws a creature, once again, I think we're just dead. But the Evernight Shade does serve as a, a valuable chump blocker um, for his guys. Uh, and we can always continually sack it to the Bloodfall Connoisseur to make our guy grow. So that way, by the end of it, our Bloodfall Connoisseur will have will be a 9-7. Yes, a 9-7. So I think here we just pass, because I think we can gain up to 14, but then if he draws a creature, he'll deal 11-13, um, uh, 17 damage, so we don't have enough to do anything right now. So we're just going to pass again. 
and you can just con once again continually stack out to the um, core core. So we're not dead yet. We are not dead yet. If that's one thing you've learned, don't give up. Um, draw mental agony. We'll take the last card out of his hand. I just imagine it being a land. Um, but we'll do it anyway because there's no reason not to. And yep, it was a land, but that's okay. Um, no reason to swing in yet. Uh, we can't swing in without him like drawing a creature. And I don't like putting all our hopes and dreams onto whether he draws a creature or not. We draw Ghoul Flesh, which is good. So now we need to think about whether um, he can swing back for enough damage to kill us. So if we jump up to... Um, uh, the thing is, he could just block our guys, and then we would be in trouble. I think we still just want to Ghoul Flesh the Thrombin Valiant here. To prevent him from dealing too much damage to us. And then we want to think about, okay, so if we jump back up to 14, and then he can come back at us if he draws a creature for 14. So we don't want to swing in yet. Um, and, you know, we've drawn a lot of lands, he's drawing a lot of lands, so, you know, there's no reason to do anything right now. And he's at 2 minutes, so he could just, like, run out of time. That's a big concern for him as well, and I bet he's not considering that when he's playing this. We might be able to stall out long enough for us to just win on time. And, you know, it's not... Uh, it's just part of the way you play online. At this point, me winning on time is the same as me winning anyway, so I'll take it. This is it. Um, he is... Swinging in with Pathbreaker Worm. So we're going to block with the Blood Flow Connoisseur and sack the Ever Nightshade out to it, I think. And if he has a trick for us, then I don't want to click through and accidentally just lose our blood flow on the but um, at this rate, I think we could always keep the blood flow on the If we keep the blood flow on if we keep the Evernight Shade, we won't gain the life. We'll go down to four. Evernight Shade will become a five, three. Uh, and then we can swing back in for a 7 lifelink. I mean, he could just keep the Pathbreaker Worm, though. I'm, like, I'm afraid that he might just have a pump spell for us. If he has the pump spell, um, the Blood Flow Connoisseur will survive anyway. So I think we still want to sack out. So basically what I was thinking there, I'm sorry, I moved a little bit too fast. Um, by giving this, we'll become a 9-7, so he has to have the pump spell anyway to kill the Blood Flow Connoisseur. Yep, and he doesn't. So we jump back up to 14, I think. Uh, maybe he was starting to get impatient there. He only has a minute left. Um, and I think we're in pretty solid control of the game at this point. We jump back up to 14. We can swing back in for 9 lifelink next turn, bringing us up to 23. And he's only got the Wolf Revenger and Gold Knight Commander. He's only got a minute left. So I think we, we basically won the game. So that goes to show you that you never give up on these games. Um, here we're... I'm trying to decide, I might want to just sack out the Corpse Traders to his guy before we swing in, just in case. So we're going to play the Corpse Traders. Uh, and then I'm going to sack out the Corpse Traders. And uh, to steal a card from his hand, because I don't want him to like somehow have a trick. Yep, he had a Joint Assault. I don't know why he didn't play it last turn. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered because we drew the... It wouldn't have mattered because we drew the... But what's a card anyway? We drew the creature the next turn, 
So we still would have been fine, but if he had pumped there, I would have gone down to 13, and if I don't draw a creature and I keep drawing lands, um, you know, he wins. So, I mean, like, if I had just conceded when I was drawing too many lands, I wouldn't be winning the game right now. You always want to play this kind of stuff out. This is this has been a really solid game for us. I'm, you know, proud of the fact that we stuck with it. And, you know, he doesn't have enough time, so if he wants to do this, he can block all he wants. Um, and he'll, you know, he'll two for one, but he's only got 20 seconds left. And we'll jump back up to 23, so... Yep. And he didn't even regenerate, so... I mean, he got upset, I'm assuming. He just got mad that we drew our one out, quote-unquote. Um, tough game. I'm gonna tell him, good game, bro. Um, I had multiple outs at the homicidal seclusion point. Um, he says that he misclicked twice, I'm not sure if he's talking about right now where he should have regenerated. But, he conceded and we won. So, that goes to show you never give up. This has been the Lair Bear for the MTG Noob. We took down that draft, that felt awesome to come back from such a, you know, big deficit. But, we really won it and, you know, it was great drafting with you. Uh, tell me if you guys saw any mistakes or if anything else you guys would like to see. Um, I'll see you guys next time.